Hello and welcome to CRM Zen Show, where we talk about all things Zoho. This is episode 271, Backstage Madness, for October 6th, 2023. From Zenata Consulting, I'm Brett Martin. And I'm Tyler Colt, and let's get right on into the show. Oh, Tyler, are you having a good week, buddy? Absolutely. Yeah, it's a nice yeah. week here. Got some good weather in Colorado. Should be a nice weekend. It's crazy. We're in the 80s again here in Southern California. I don't know. We had a week of we're like, oh, looks like winter's coming. Looks like fall's here. But no, it just uh, got batted back. So, yeah. Oh, life. Man, I'm glad to be back. It was a busy week last week, the last couple of weeks. And I feel like I'm just getting caught up. But um, we have a big, big show. So we're just going to jump right on into it with announcements and events. I'm, I'm really not sure how I feel about this. Before we get into the the uh, the events here, we have an announcement. So uh, we ran a poll last week, and uh, it turns out, as of this morning, Freddie snapped this. <laughs> this was, uh, you know, on the CRM Zen show, do you like it when Brett and Tyler go down rabbit holes that have nothing to do with Zoho? 41% of the people love it when I do it. 41% of the people love it when you do it. And I'll and, believe uh, that even doubt. I know. And <laughs> 17%. There's a 1% missing there, by the way. So there's some rounding errors. I'm wondering like- Add that I, 1% to my column. So I should be at 42. And then the math would check out. I bet you I'm like 41.8 and you're 41.2. I'm sure that's it, you know, at the end of the day. But uh, that's pretty funny. So anyway- 82 to 83 percent of you love the rabbit holes so uh you know what we're going to continue to go down if those other 17 percent, please continue to listen because we love you you know and it's mostly skip Zoho. those parts just skip yeah, just skip part. skip and skip 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 forward there you go all right and over on the event side of thing um as always if you head over to club zanata that's our online community join all just require your email so we know who you are and you can leave messages and participate in the community we keep track of all of the events in the world of Zoho. Uh, ours as well as those. We'll start with ours. Um, we've got an Azaz coming up next week. Uh, actually, is that next week? Yeah, we got an Azaz next, next week. week. Yeah, followed by the CRM Zen show. And then we've got the Zoho Books full product overview. I'm going to be doing that with John Oda, who's our uh, director of finance. We're going to be kind of running through all of Zoho Books. Uh, followed by another CRM Zen and another Azaz. And I don't even know what we've got going on in October. Do I, no webinar has still... What's the November webinar? Do we know? No, I think we need to plan the last couple here. Get those. Yeah, we decided. need to get those. We need to do a vote on those, Freddie. You know, what should the last two webinars be about? Um, give people some choices. All right, and then uh, over on the Zoho side, um, they are kind of ramping up. They've got a big October coming up. So uh, October tenth, you've got the Beginners Club in Miami. You got a Zoho Finance Workshop in Los Angeles. You've got a Creator Tech Connect series, uh, which is running all over the world <laughs> anyway uh just go to club.z and click on uh club you know click on events see what's going on in the world of zoho so uh and i noticed we've got a nice little halloween theme on the events here oh wow the zoho oh, events has now got a little zoho spooky. yeah we're getting into the spooky season Wow, but also Coming look on the Zoho events. Uh, we've got a new image that I've not seen before, which is a like a parking lot of Zoho cars. It's a Zoho colored parking lot with Zoho colored cars. That's quite. Uh, I love that. Very very cool. We have uh, we're taking it to a new. I think this is that uh, Mid Journey. Mid Journey is be. just producing. It's got Freddie, our producer, has an, an addiction to uh, creating things with Mid Journey. So I would bet. I would bet you that that is. Uh, Straight out I mean, of the lot. Going down a rabbit hole, I would not want to be an investor in iStock photo or anything like it. Um, no. Because, and oh, I, no. you know, and I'm sorry if you were an illustrator or photographer making money off that stuff, but that those, that ship has sailed, my friends. That business. As others. That whole business, I know. Crazy. All right. And uh, before we get to our news, and we've got quite a bit of it, let's have a message from our sponsor. Are you struggling to get your team trained and using Zoho effectively? Considering the hefty costs of team meetings and onboarding sessions dedicated to Zoho training, there has to be an easier way. Say hello to efficiency with our Zoho team training courses. Zoho CRM made easy. Become a project management pro, top tier customer support, and maximize your marketing impact. Are you ready to equip your team? Start today at zanata.com training and let us lead the way.
Wow. So that is our brand new ad from Good our sponsor, golly. Tyler. Look at that bad boy. <laughs> yes, That's it Freddie was. with one of his favorite sound bites of me commenting on the quality of his own work. So we'll leave that to the viewers too. Yeah, but what do you think of the logo, dude? The end, that whole way. Love the logo. Oh, love the little spinning logo. Um, I love also you saying uh, now a quick word from our sponsor, and then it's just us still. I do. <laughs> I know it's just us. But that is our team training courses, and if you haven't uh, checked them out, uh, we started with CRM, then we added projects, and now we've got desk launching very very shortly, followed by the marketing one. Uh, we've got bundles available on those. All kinds of things is are happening. And if you're listening to this show, because I'm not going to put this anywhere else, if you email me, brett at zanata.com, I got a 50% off coupon for you. So uh, let me know. Anyway, uh, great, great stuff. Nice job on that, Freddie. And with that, guys, let us get right on into the news. All right. You can now, in Zoho CRM, improve your A-B testing with Zia suggestions inside of web forms in the CRM. So if you are a CRM user and a CRM user only, you may use Zoho web forms. That is there basically you can create forms and embed them on your website or wherever you need to embed them. People fill them out. That information then goes into the CRM. If you're a Zoho one user, most likely you use Zoho forms uh, because it's better, a lot more powerful to build your forms and use them that way and have them right into the CRM. Um, but this is kind of interesting because Tyler, I was talking to you before the show. I don't think that Zoho forms, which is their big, bad, powerful form builder has a B testing. Um, I but believe so. You, you know, with a B testing with Zoho forms, you need to do it more with like, uh, something like page sense, right. Where you actually build right. two versions and serve up two versions. Right. But yeah, it exactly doesn't actually right. support a B testing just natively within the forms themselves. And you can't do that. You've made an entire video on A-B testing in page sense, by the way. Um, ah, so, you interesting. Know, I forgot yeah, I do You that. have. Yep, you have. Um, I don't know. You can't do it in sales IQ, can you? No. 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 It, was, it doesn't it was control any uh, on-page elements. Because in my search for uh, Zoho Forms A-B testing, like the first hit was you on your... Uh, Doing a page sets, how to do A-B testing in page sets. Um, but anyway, if you're using the CRM, this is great. You can have two two variations of your forms. And, you know, when do people abandon your forms? What's getting, you know, are people filling it out? Where are they bailing? What are they doing? Uh, Zia will make recommendations as to, you know, how you should build your form. How's it going to, you know, and then it's going to basically serve up those two forms and tell you which one actually uh, converts better. Uh, than all the other forms. So it's uh, very, nice very functionality. Cool. I mean, like yeah. it is it is pretty slick because cu customers will oftentimes ask us, okay, well, well, how many things, how many fields can I get away with putting on my contact us form? Because I'd love to gather all this info, but I want people to fill it out, right? And if I have to take a little less info to get their name, email, phone submitted, then I'll yep. surely do so. So with an A-B test, you kind of just work your way up. Start up with the simplest, test it against the simplest plus one, right? No yep. significant difference. Now do simplest plus one versus plus two, right? And just kind of keep stacking your way up to see where that break even is, where people start falling off. Um, so yeah, really nice. And then this update is specifically around Zia providing some extra insights and uh, recommendations for you. Um, well, did so they have A-B testing find... prior to this? Yeah. Oh yeah, they've had they've had A-B testing. You just had to manually do everything. Where Zia now can make some suggestions. Ah, very, very nice. Very nice. All right. Moving along with the news. Um, we now have uh, new updates for hassle-free error management in CRM wizards. I would imagine our entire development staff will be going woohoo. Um, really, to me, this is just Zoho fixed a bunch of bugs. Um, you can comment on this, but in my reading through this, they're calling it advanced error handling, which was if there was an error on the form, the save button disappeared and it wasn't present and you couldn't save really? the form, but you didn't know there was an error. So um, I'm not sure that's advanced error handling or it's fixing a major bug inside of Wizards, but um, they do have a lot of bugs and there's just a lot of little enhancements that they've made here um, to Wizards. And you some of these are things that uh, specifically like around that save button, it's basically like it's not going to let you push a wizard live without a save button on a page anymore which like you should always have one 
right? <laughs> In right. case someone doesn't finish the whole thing. Um, we actually, you know, haven't found ourselves using wizards in a huge way. Uh, a big challenge with them is they really only work properly on the creation of a record. So oftentimes if we have kind of like a structured process we want to go through with like a lead, for example, we'll just do it with a blueprint, right? Where each transition pops up like the relevant fields that you would look to capture on a wizard page. Um, so wizards are nice if, if you do a lot of manual creation of records. But we honestly, we try to get our clients not to be manually creating leads, manually creating contacts where a wizard's really going to be valuable. Um, but nonetheless, right, kind of smoothing some of the edges, just making it easier for people if they do want to use wizards is always going to be welcome. Very nice. And moving right along, we're talking about begin here. And in begin, they now have new target meter components in dashboards and a create record action in workflows. So the biggest part of this announcement is uh, on your dashboards in Biggin, um, you now have a variety of new little widgets you can put here. You've got a dial gauge, uh, you have a traffic light. Uh, these are various things, you know, whether you're red, yellow, you're green, or how, how are you doing? These are, right? these are just straight from CRM, like same straight, exact straight. components. Yeah, exactly. You've got a single bar, you got a double bar, you got multiple bars, you, you know, um, you can change the style. It's very nice. Very, very nice. Um, and then you also now have a create record action in workflows. So in big and before you did not have the ability to uh, create a record, which is uh, through a workflow. Now you can make it life easier for you there. So, uh, Slowly. if you're unfamiliar, this is Zoho's kind of started off as their lightweight, more of a pipe drive version of their CRM. It is now coming a direct competitor to Zoho CRM. And it has features that CRM doesn't, uh, you know, so CRM still has a ton more features than Biggin, yeah. but it, it's interesting to, I, I, I'm not a fan of the Biggin having great features that CRM doesn't. That's the where search I search bar again, every time Biggin comes up, I make this desperate request. Soho put the search bar from Biggin in CRM. It is so much better. Please, please, pretty please. Uh, uh, anyway. Hats off to the big team. Nice little, uh, nice little enhancement there. And moving yeah. through with the news, uh, you can now manage tickets more efficiently with views and filters in my area inside Zoho Desk. And if you wondered, Tyler, this is my area here, and I don't, I won't come in your area. Don't worry, don't, don't come near my area. I've got boundaries, man. Uh, so what are we talking about here? Yeah, so the My Area is within the Help Center when like a user logs in. It obviously shouldn't be called My Area. Uh, it should be called Home or something that people will recognize. But what it really does essentially attracts like the tickets that you or other users at your organization have submitted, right? So like a Zenata customer could log into My Area and see the tickets that they've submitted to us. This is my um, state of... <laughs> my stapler don't take my stapler what movie was that office space <laughs> uh that. office space yep with the red stapler yeah, yeah that's I'm sorry it's already interrupt up. there oh no you're all good um but yeah so essentially there's just some new views and filters uh that you can provide to um clients as they are opening up my area or should be called their area when they open it up um to see the tickets that are relevant to them um, so it doesn't hurt, you know, the help center is nice. I think it is one area of desk that I think could use a little improvement, you know, when you compare it against some of their big competitors. Um, so I'm happy to see them working on some help center functionality. Nice. Very good. All right. That's my area in Zoho desk and moving right along. Zoho creator upcoming after updates, October, 2023. Um, app menu builder and notification preferences. So usually they've got, uh, you know, eight or nine, but they've been just they're coming out fast and furious. But uh, both these seem to be, uh, especially the app menu builder, a uh, pretty big addition. To yeah, the, the menu builder being able to have hierarchical menus is pretty big. Um, that one is pretty big. I, I don't know that we need it in our install of Creator the way we have menus set up, but that is a big request. I know that one is... People yep. are probably cheering over, um, you know, multi-level menus is really the big thing there, right? Being able to right. say, oh, you hover over contacts. It does a pop out that says lawyers, brokers, or this, right? You hover over lawyers. It says, you know, 
defendant, plaintiff, right. you know, whatever, right? Like these different things, these different subcategories. Um, I personally, I like to get into the all data and use a filter, but there are a lot of users who prefer to have kind of a multi-level uh, menu hierarchy. So big shout out to Zoho Creator Team. I know this one is heavily, heavily demanded. Oh, it's yes, yes. Just don't turn it into Zoho people, okay? So yeah. that's And I, available I for, I know that's what you're looking for here, available for yep. Creator 5 and Creator 6. So And right in now. all data centers. So that is a biggie. And now you've also got the soon to be launched notification preferences will feature will be a nifty addition that provides you with complete control over customizing your notifications. Uh, before you've had no control over your notifications, Tyler, and now you can control them. Uh, very limited, very limited. And these, I believe, are notifications kind of to a system admin. Um, and I know that Josh gets many uh, inside of our creator app in the top right, you have a little notifications bell. I get the odd one, you know, we ask for feedback on tasks. And so if a client gives feedback on one, I, I get that. I know Josh gets a, a tremendous amount of notifications as the primary developer of our portal. So hopefully this lets him <laughs> turn some of those off for himself. It also available on creator five, six, and in all data centers. Very Rock nice. and roll. And uh, those notifications will be in your area. My area and They're in Josh's area, to be honest it's with you, more than anyone else's. <laughs> All right, and moving right along, Zoho Doc Scanner says yes to top notch scanning experiences with Apple's recent updates. There is a doc, an application just in iOS called Zoho Doc Scanner. It utilizes Apple's scanning technology, which continues to improve on a daily. I love Apple scanning technology. I use it all of the time. I use it just to scan text, read text, put text into things. It's, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, and it seems like we have this conversation every single time Apple releases a major update. Zoho immediately follows suit with a bunch of cool stuff because they are, as we have said, an Apple house. Um, so a bunch of cool stuff. So basically the scanner has drastically improved. So if you are using, um, you know, if you are a fan of the Zoho scanner, then go ahead. Life just got a little better. It just got better. Yep. And the whole widgets thing, by the way, is just huge. We're going to talk about that a little more. I mean, now widgets. And I nerd out all weekend. Now that I finally upgraded my laptop and I have the new oh. OS on it, I'm going to be playing with widgets all weekend long. <laughs> did it arrive? It did arrive. Yeah, I went to pick it up. Yeah, because okay. uh, there's no Apple store up here in, in uh, Fort Collins. Closest one is uh, Tim Cook, if you're listening. I know you are. I know you're a, a regular listener of the show. Uh, yeah. Get an Apple store for My mom, actually, she lives in northern Colorado as well. She emailed Tim Cook and told him to uh, put an Apple store up here. So it should happen any day. Um, but yeah, Moment this one I get from Best Buy, which felt very weird buying an Apple product from Best Buy. Um, but well, you know, in northern Colorado, you do what you want. I haven't been in a Best Buy in ages, but they used to have an entire Apple section. Do they still have it? Where it's like, you they know, do. It it's just area it's, voted to Apple. Yeah, there's an area in there. It's just, uh, it's morose, man. There's a lot of empty shelves, a lot of cobwebs rolling around the place. It's uh, yeah, Not a, yeah, story for time. another day, but that was a whole experience going and getting this laptop. So, Not a good, it's funny. I went into the Apple store uh, just last weekend. I had ordered, I got my new iPhone 15 Pro Max plus whatever the hell it is. But um, I had one ordered on online the day it came out and I wanted 512 megs. I wanted it white, 15 Pro Max. And they said, yeah, you're going to get it in like uh, November. So um, then my watch died and it just yeah. blew up on me. So I had to go in and, you know, get a new watch and get my watch repaired. And so I, I went in there and I'm like, you don't happen to have an iPhone 15 Pro Max in stock. And they go, we've got one. It's white with 512 gigs. I'm like, oh shit! Like that's the one I want. <laughs> I'll take it. Cancel my other order. So, um, you know, I I got that. And but the the Tyler, the opposite of Best Buy. I mean, so so many people. Middle of the mm -hmm. week, you know, it's just packed, packed, oh, yeah. packed. You know. Every single table, it's just, uh, it, it's crazy. It, it, um, absolutely crazy. They are definitely not hurting, you know? No. And then I had to go back on a weekend to drop off the watch because I had to make an appointment to drop off the watch. I just couldn't give it to them. And it was even worse on a Saturday. I mean, it was insane. Could hardly move in that store. So 
Crazy, crazy stuff. All right, with that, moving on with the news. Uh, Zoho Writer has introduced smart composing using uh, slash commands. I'm going to play a little video here, and Tyler, I will just narrate this, but you're in the middle of uh, writing a document, and you just hit slash, and you say generate content on whatever, and it generates the content. And then you can just highlight the content and say, hey, generate a title. And, uh, you know, it'll go ahead and generate a heading or a title for the entire thing. It's basically using chat GPT. Um, but it's this is without making any AI calls on the back. Right. Cause in the video, it seems like it does a pretty good job. So I right. they made a massive improvement to Zia or it's making an API call to chat GPT, which, Hey, I am fine with if they just want to use that as the back end, that yeah. works for me. Yes. Yeah. But, <laughs> but the, you're not having to go to chat GPT, chat GPT, grab it, copy it, pull it in. Right. It's just. Yeah, um, just workflow wise, um, much easier. Now the question I have is we have a license for Chat GPT 4.0. And I don't know if on the back end, I haven't looked at this yet. Like if on the back end, you do you put your own credentials in? I mean, is Zoho Yeah, so far, so far when you're doing any of Zoho's Chat GPT installs, like I installed it in our CRM and then yeah. haven't used it once since I put it in there. Um, yeah, you put in your like chat GPT business account auth token. You have to set up oh, like a handshake to your account. Um, but this doesn't make any reference to that. So I don't know if that's the case for this functionality in particular. Um, what well, has to be because they can't do this. I mean, it's got to be. You're saying it doesn't make reference to open AI in here at all? Uh, I didn't see it. Wow. Not well, I, I mean, it. it looks like it's just got to be, though. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. As he is now integrated with ChatGPT, we recommend using discretion when working on content that contains personally identifiable information. So I'm assuming that's what they're saying here. This is the ChatGPT. It's bringing up ChatGPT. Got it. It's got to be. Because it was just too good. I mean, <laughs> I know Sridhar said he's going to build a ChatGPT competitor for... Uh, uh, fifteen million dollars or something like that, but I just don't see it happening, you know. Um, but uh, anyway, just huge, huge, just integrations here. Um, you know, you've got a single slash and a double slash. I'm gonna have to go through and pay attention to all this anyway. The article is in our newsletter, so be sure to check that out because uh, the pretty, uh, pretty impressive stuff. Uh, kudos to the writer team and Zoho in general. They've just they've been on top of AI integration on the best levels. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Shortly after the big craze of ChatGPT, they rolled out plugins for many apps, right? Yeah. Sales IQ, Desk, CRM, right? They jumped on it very quickly. Yeah, really, really good stuff. Alrighty, and moving right along, a Zoho Notebook now offers seamless productivity with Apple's latest updates. So basically, this is drop your notebooks as widgets anywhere. Um, yeah. And it's really, really cool. I mean, if, if you're watching, we'll kind of describe this. But, you know, one of the things they're doing is they're talking about how you can add it on iOS 17. And you can just drop a widget with a checklist. So a, you've got a Zoho Note that's a checklist, and you can drop that as a widget on your phone or on your desktop, by the way, and um, in, if you're using a Mac, and use that checklist and go through it. Um, just a bunch of really, really cool features. Again, leveraging you know everything that's going on with the latest release of iOS and um, what do they call it? Mac OS and Mac OS. Yep, Mac OS. And, yeah. And there you go. And Sonoma is kind of a big one as well. So there's a there's a whole bunch going on there. But anyway. Um, very cool. So notebook, just big, big, big integration across the board. So continuing on the on the theme that we were talking about a few minutes ago um, with Scanner and everything else. So nice, nice job. Um, did I tell you I went to the Zoho store or to the Apple store? It was really packed. Yeah, you, you did. You mentioned. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty cool. Have you been to Best Buy recently? <laughs> I hear it's <laughs> graveyard. But we're just trying to be in line with the poll here. Everyone, we got 82% of people that, that want us to do these rabbit holes. So formal apology to the... 17% and the mysterious missing one. All right. And now that field service management has been released and is out in the wild and getting usage while well, we're getting a monthly roundup and monthly updates uh, and they are working on it. And I know there's just, I'm impressed. It was released. It was a thousand times better than, than when it was originally released in 2019. And now it's, you know, it's solid. It's sure it's got a few things that need to be worked on, but now we're seeing constant updates on this. So 
Shout out to the FSM team. Um, so here's the monthly roundup. You now have custom reports. Got almost 30 built-in reports. Did it not have these on upon release, Tyler? Well, so it had 30 built-in reports, but you couldn't create custom reports. So they've I essentially added like the report builder from CRM or a very similar looking report builder um, to just pull some like simple day-to-day reports out. Of, very uh, nice. FSM. Yeah, very nice very to have. Nice. And this seems to be major, but now you have an API to associate records with uh, Zoho Books and Invoice. Huge, yeah. I mean, the, and to be clear, there are pre-built integrations from FSM to finance and FSM to CRM. But what happens is, depending on your particular workflow, you might be an FSM and want to create an invoice automatically, right? Rather than like click through the invoice flow. So an API like this lets us automate that, but still create that connection that the default integration would have created if you did it that way. Um, it's like when we're auto create a CR or an invoice and link it to a deal. Right, they have to kind of open up that path so that we can create that connection behind the scenes. Really nice that they did this already. Um, really, really nice because uh, automation, there's a lot of room for it in the world of FSM. Um, so being able to connect the dots easily is huge. Um, last two things they need, honestly, that are on my watch list are uh, date-based workflows, like being able to say 10 days after an action, do a thing. Those are mysteriously missing, but I know coming very, very soon. Um, and we have heard reports about the offline mode of mobile app being either non-existent or inconsistent. I don't remember exactly what I had read. Uh, oh, a couple yeah. So let's see what they've got. They have some mobile updates here. Uh, kind of minor stuff. Those look more like bug fixes on uh, Android. And uh, yeah, more of the same thing on iOS. Nothing major there. So no, no offline mode yet, but hopefully it will come. All righty, and moving right along, let's head over to some backstage news. So uh, this is the roundup for September 2023. Um, title of our show, sponsorship categories can now be configured with mad currency. Uh, if you wonder what mad currency is, that's backstage madness for you right there. That's the uh, MAD is the symbol for Madagascar. So, um, you know, I was planning on doing an event in Madagascar for years, but I haven't because backstage did not support their currency. And that's it. I that's the linchpin right there. That's what we've been waiting for. That has been the big deal. And it's kind of crazy, but you know, those people, they will not do business in euros or US dollars, you know, and especially they won't do it in CAD, which is CAD, which is Canadian dollars, right? Matter of fact, they're mad about CAD. Um, and and that that's a whole thing going on there too. Um, so anyway, that's just huge. Big, big, big. And you can now choose when the event map on the venue page on the microsite should be displayed. If you're unfamiliar with Backstage, you c it, it manages everything with your events. So you've got the microsites, you've got uh, speakers pages, you all of these various things, and they're just constantly tweaking those. So if you're a Backstage user, you will want to go through and you will kind of want to go ahead and check out all of these various updates. Um, I will say this team is constantly making improvements to these. Um, I noticed it's picked back up now that um, Zoholix is in yep. full swing. <laughs> yeah, you can always tell this is an app that Zoho uses, right? Because now that they're doing events again, they're like, oh, yeah, there's a bunch of things we wanted to knock out and backstage. So let's let's get those done. I don't know. We'll have to check on this, but uh, perhaps, perhaps the European division needed some Madagascar, uh, you know, things at or the the uh, the Africa. Where is Madagascar? Africa? Yes. Uh, I out here. So. Oh, it's an island. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I think it's part of the continent. That's why wow, that's horrible. Should have known. Should have looked that one up before the show. Yeah, I'm gonna get. We're gonna get mail now for sure. Anyway, moving on with more backstage news. I get uh, mad now mail from our listeners. <laughs> Um, you now have lead capture for your vendors. So on the it's backstage cool. app, yes. It's cool. I don't know how much you had a chance to read through this one, but this this is really slick. So a while back, backstage had added the ability to have like vendors or exhibitors, right? As a different type of like logged in user to a backstage event. So obviously you have like your attendees, but if Zanata wants to go and set up a booth, we would be like an exhibitor or a vendor. 
Now what they're actually letting you do is, is provide unique forms to each of those exhibitors that would allow an attendee to like fill out a form, scan a QR code, whatever it might be, and actually provide their contact info directly to that exhibitor. That's yep. awesome. I mean, like I'll tell you, clients will come to us not as a big project, but as a small project to build out these types of forms for them when they have like their trade show schedule for the year. Um, so just being able to offer it as the event provider is very cool. Um, very yep. nice idea for them to uh, roll this out. I don't know if I've seen another event tool do that where you're actually providing the lead capture mechanism for the exhibitors. I haven't. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's pretty super nice. I mean, so, you know, and, and they added a badge printer four or five years ago. So you print the badges, the badges are going to be printed with the QR codes. Now your vendors have got their booth, they've got their scanner scanning the badges. So it's really, it does everything for you. Um, super, super nice. So yeah, very cool. Very, very nice. And with that, Tyler, let's get on into our implementation of the week. All righty. So this one is an implementation built out by yours truly, uh, an integration for Zoho bookings to Zoho CRM for creating deals as part of a sales process. So as a bit of a preamble, uh, longtime listeners in the show know that Brett and I have our odds and ends issues with Zoho bookings. Um, but it actually works really well for our client in this case because the meeting availability for this type of meeting is only ever used by Zoho Bookings. And so every meeting that is in those time slots is a Zoho Bookings meeting. And in those cases, you don't really have any issues with the calendar sync or integration that you need to be concerned about. So in this implementation, our goal is essentially to connect Zoho Bookings and CRM so that specific types of bookings will generate activity in the CRM side of the house. Um, in this specific build, the type of meeting that we were looking at would indicate that a prospect is pre-qualified and therefore can skip the leads module entirely. Um, in the case of uh, this client, essentially leads is used to get a prospect to the point where they have booked this meeting. So if they are skipping that process and just booking it right out the gate, they don't need to be a lead. They can just come in as a contact account and deal. Um, so the nice thing about bookings and, and one of my favorite things is that uh, you can just run a daily script when a booking uh, occurs. And so in this case, what we do is set up a custom function in bookings that will run anytime a meeting of a certain type is booked. Um, that function will check the CRM for existing contacts with that email address that's been provided by the booking. Uh, if there is an existing contact, a deal will get created under that contact. Uh, if there is not yet an existing contact, then both a contact and deal are created automatically. Um, these deals are flagged with a source identifying they came through this kind of like expedited pipeline, right? Rather than going through the traditional deal flow or lead flow, I should say. Um, so that we'll still be able to track like the throughput and effectiveness of this particular type of prospect. It's kind of a nice one. Again, as we mentioned, like there are times where you do not want to use Zoho bookings. Um, but in a case like this, where it's like, hey, our sales reps are available for this type of call from 10 to 2 every day. And they will never have a different meeting in that time slot because we want those four hours completely available for this type of booking. Then bookings actually works just fine. That, that yep. is a case where if everything is coming through bookings, you're good to go. Um, so yeah, in this case, it actually worked really nicely. And uh, yeah, they've been using it here for a little while now. Fantastic. So I'm going to, you know, I, I'm waiting for Zoho Books to get better. I'm going to put this out here to the to our audience, though. So we use Calendly. Everybody knows that. We talk about it all the time. Um, and Calendly integrates with Zoom. We use Zoom over Zoho Meetings for a variety of reasons. We've talked about it at Hawk. But we're coming up on renewal on Calendly. I've got a week. And we've got 30 people and it's $150 per, like, what is it? 50, it's, I don't know, 150 a year, something like that per person. Like, so $4,500 on that renewal. Um, anybody using anything else? We'll throw a poll out there. I would love to know if anybody right. has a online meeting software that they love, that integrates with Zoom, that just works perfectly. That's a beautiful little thing because, uh, you know, it's just, it's one of those things where it, you look at Zoom just released one for five bucks. Right. So basically 60 bucks a year. So you're almost, you know, one third the price. And 
uh, and these things are ubiquitous. They're out there. It's just impossible to keep up. And I haven't had the time to to go through any of these. So I would love to see if anybody's got their favorite calendar that integrates with everything, that works with everything, that does round robin meetings, that checks multiple calendars, that does things real in real time, all those kind of things. And while we're at it, Zoho, my wish for you is that Zoho Bookings, my wish for me is that one year from today, Tyler and I are announcing that one of our re- online calendar software is up for renewal and we're not renewing it because we've moved over to Zoho Bookings. Because I would love it. There's nothing problems. more that I would love than that. I'm just so, so desperate for that. So anyway. Let's make that happen and call us. We can give you a whole feature list. You can bang it out in a week. And if you can bang it out in the next three, four days, we'll move now. There you go. Just <laughs> let it go. All right. And with that, let's head on over to Zanata.com and see what's happening over there. Tyler, did I mention we've got a webinar coming up this month on Zoho Books? I've heard. I've heard rumors of a webinar coming up on October 17th about Zoho Books. At 10 a.m. Yes, yes. With myself and John, we're going to be doing that. And um, so, consequently, we have a blog tying in to some Zoho Look Book stuff. So, uh, automating your invoicing, how Zoho Books streamlines your billing process. Um, you know, if you're a Zoho user, uh, Zoho Books, we've said, I think, I would say for 90% of the clients we talk to, Zoho Books is fine, right? Yeah. They're completely completely going to suit all of their needs. And so if you're a Zoho One user or you're a CRM user and you are thinking about it, the crazy automations and the cool things you can do by having the finance suite um, and Zoho Books tied into your CRM and your overall process is amazing. And this is just one of those things you can do here. So yeah, and this is a flow just to like quickly hide, not to go down too far of a rabbit hole. We've expended our one rabbit hole per uh, CRM Zen show quota. Um, but we actually have a lot of customers. So even if they have their primary system of accounting as like QuickBooks, we'll use Zoho books for like the estimate to sales order to invoice flow because it's very smooth and allows for easy online payment. So you don't have to actually move your whole system of accounting and actually get a lot of value out of Zoho books. Um, well worth considering, especially if you're on Zoho one, you can basically use it as your quoting and payment receipt tool. And then just have everything right via API to uh, whatever your system of accounting is. And if you haven't, please head over to Zanata.com. Check out our resource library. That is where we talk about all of the different Zoho apps. You've got an icon. So we say, yes, these are great apps. You should go ahead and use them. No problem. Uh, Maybe, like we say, most of the time, these are still great applications. Odds are they're going to work. Uh, they're going to work for you, and they're just not quite yet. They're just not quite there in most cases. Um, I'm tell you what, though, I'm hearing stuff around uh, marketing automation, Tyler. I think it's about to skyrocket way up. Um, I would love so that. I would love, <laughs> I would love it love too. That. I like that's the thing. Like we don't it. put things down there because we like having them down there. <laughs> like no. we would love for all of these to be. I want all these. Yes, I want all these. Yes, yes. yes. I mean, I mean look, if bookings and meeting alone would save us what a lot of money a year <laughs> on Zoom. A ton. We take no joy in the not quite yet column. Take no joy that, in it. That is that is for certain. And if you click through on any of these icons, well, it's our resource library. It's where we have all of the resources that we've put together so that you can, um, you know, basically just easily parse through without having to head over to YouTube and kind of search through there. You can find them right here. But speaking of YouTube, let's head on over and look at our tip of the week. So Josh is back at it again with custom buttons for reports in Zoho Creator. So he has put together a uh, almost 12 minute video on how to do custom buttons for reports inside Zoho Creator. He's our creator guru, probably one of the best creator developers on the planet. And um, he's just been going, tell you what, there's been... There's so little good creator content out here. I mean, just the great comments we're getting and feedback from people are like, wow, yeah. we really, really needed this. So yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's funny. I had a quick conversation with Josh uh, maybe a month back about uh, Zoho Creator. I wanted to get some more content up. And like two days later, he had a list of, I think, 26 creator videos <laughs> that uh, he wants to get recorded. So yeah, we've been trying to catch up a little bit. You know, we get, do get some requests from uh, viewers around creator content. Uh, back in the day when I used to record a lot of our tip videos, um, I wouldn't do creator because it's not my area of expertise. 
Um, I, I'm decent at it, passable at it at best. Um, but now that Josh is making these, we're really excited to kind of fill out that side of our content because we know it's been a little bit lacking, I think, to date. Yes. As, and if you don't know, if you head over to um, youtube.com slash Zanata, that is where all of our content lives. We release stuff all the time. Um, three, four videos a week, five videos a week. So really worth uh, checking out. And Tyler, we are at, uh, just checking in here on the back end, we are at 12,949 subscribers. So I have a feeling next week an angel will be getting his wing. Uh, we'll cross that 13,000 subscriber mark. So the rate we're going, I think we're going to end up here just right at 15,000, probably just a little shy of 15,000 subscribers. Um, so uh, good year. I want to thank everybody for all of your support, but uh, please head on over, subscribe, uh, hit the bell so you get alerts every time we release a new video, and we will keep you on top of what is going on in the world of Zoho. All right, buddy. There it Another is. Show. Another show. Another in the show in the bag. There you go. There you go. Number what was this one? 171, 72, something like that. 170. No, it's going to be 270 something. 271, 271 I think. 271. That's crazy. I know. That's crazy. Years and uh, years. And you came in at 55. So you got, you're like 216 under your belt. That's crazy. Like that. I can't believe it. I, I'd be curious. I was going to go back and see how many I've missed. I think I missed like 10. I don't know. Yeah. Occasionally I've missed a small handful, missed one or two when I had COVID. It's out pretty bad. One. Oh, I forgot about you small in the amount. mid. Yeah, right yeah. after I moved to Colorado, a nice little welcome package for me was just being. Well, you were in that target group, the elderly, you know, people <laughs> with uh, pre-existing conditions and tall, skinny dudes. You well, know? I was in that group that drove from Cincinnati to Colorado, <laughs> stopping at every large gas station that'll across the country. So, yeah, that'll, <laughs> that'll, yeah, do, that'll it do it. That'll do it. All right, everybody, uh, thank you so much for watching the show. And as always, if you would like to get in touch with us over here at Zanata, then uh, please head over to Zanata.com and click on Book a Meeting. We'd love to talk to you. On the website is where you'll find complete episodes of the show, as well as links to all the stories we discussed today. Uh, if you want that news delivered straight to your inbox every Monday morning, be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, and as always, we appreciate if you would like and subscribe here on YouTube, as well as your choice of podcast app. We'll see you next Friday. Very nice. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>